Hey guys, uh, I by the time like I started recording this, I have not uploaded the previous video yet, so I have not read the feedback of the new resolution. Therefore, for this video as well, I'm going to keep it regardless if it sucks. Um, so don't worry, I will read the what's it called feedback after this video because that video will be uploaded after uh, this record so yeah uh, anyways I like to join one vs one games or host them so this guy was hosting one vs one not noob and those usually seem pretty good so uh, I joined and this guy went Thor so I just went Aranos because he seemed good especially that SK clan tag uh, I was thinking that might be a pro clan tag so I decided to I decided to actually try and not go Isis. Speaking of Isis, I've been doing lots of interesting stuff, even a raw 430 villager rush with the upgrade, Rhino skin or whatever it's called. So that was pretty crazy. Like I just thought of it while I was uh, almost falling asleep, like, whoa, I should try that tactic. Because uh, the tactic goes like, two food, two gold, rest food. So that seemed like a pretty crazy tactic, but it worked out with the Pharaoh and Priest assistant. And it worked, yeah, perfectly, so that's pretty good. Uh, killed the computer in 7 minutes, but as we all know, my personal record is 5 minutes and 45 seconds. So, Raw obviously cannot even get on that level. Uh, Set is the only one that can villager rush that fast. But anyways, back to the topic. Um, this is Ghost Lake 1 vs 1, my Randall's, like I said, versus his Thor. Um, so, I was not sure what rating this guy was before I joined, obviously, because that clan tag does seem good. But from the score, I can already tell that he's upgrading Pick Sticker right now. So he's already upgraded Hunting Dogs and he's upgrading Pick Sticker as we speak. Uh, so he does not seem like a bad player. And he used a Dwarven Mine, so yeah, good. Uh, some Dwarf uh, Thor players, I mean, make the mistake that they send their Ox Cart in the first two Dwarves onto Gold instead of using a uh, Gold Mine. So they have to make a new Ox Cart and yeah, it's just a horrible tactic. Anyways, let's look at my map. So. This is pretty good, look at this. I actually have three boar right there, yeah, three boar. And uh, I can already see some berry bushes here, and due to some scouting, I might find some more food. I'm not sure if there is any more. Uh, but yeah, this is a pretty good map for me, because I have basically my food and gold right here, which is a very safe spot. My gold is not forward, uh, that's another thing to point out. And, and my TCs are not forward either. Uh, plus, they're on both sides. I hate having both TCs on one side because you have to defend that area off really well. And if you cannot defend it, it's GG. This guy has both TCs on one side, as you can see, uh, while I have it spread up. So I think, personally, this is a better map for me. Other players could argue that this is better because if you claim one, it's really easy to defend the second one. So it depends on your point of view. And on my point of view, uh, this map is better. But I fully understand if you would say this is better, having two TCs on one side. So these are just small meta or whatever it's called, like small map things. Um, I'm not taking High Hunt, some players would argue that High Hunt is a better choice, but um, the thing is, I found the other big patch of Hunt all the way up north, so I don't know if High Hunt, high hunt is a good idea, maybe late game, but I just play this low hunt, plus it's a stronger rush. Uh, yeah, so, it's from what I can see, it seems like this might be a flawless advance, uh, flawless 355 advance, and in case you guys are wondering, it takes exactly 35 seconds for one Atlantean villager to finish creating. So, some player asked me that a while ago, so I just checked it and it tick takes um, 35 seconds. Now look at this, I find a good relic right here, so this obviously means that taking the three Oracle Scouts and transforming them into heroes is a great idea in my opinion, because I can clearly take that relic. Uh, if I don't use the Valor on the three Oracle heroes, and only use them on Terma, that would be like one or two minutes later, meaning he could have already claimed that relic by then, so... Sorry, I'm talking a bit weird. But yeah, that's my plan at the moment. Uh, claiming the relic, and I seem to have a good economy. Not a flawless advance, but just a few seconds behind. It's actually a four minute flat advance, so that's still pretty good. And as you can see, he is not advancing yet. Where is he? I w uh, sorry, I wasn't checking the scores. He might be advancing, but I don't think he's advancing yet. Uh, because I'm Atlantis and I have a lower score than him, so... So yeah, I don't think he's advancing yet. Oh no, he's not advancing, definitely, because we're only three minutes in. Uh, so... 
Yeah, people always ask me, why did I pay so much attention to scores? Well, if you're in a 1 vs 1 live game, scores tell everything. Uh, at the beginning, I told you he was upgrading pick sticker. I knew that from the scores. And right now, I know he's not advancing from the scores once again. So, scores tell everything. And you guys seem to not understand that because you keep asking me why I pay attention to scores. And you guys complain that I pay attention too much to the scores. Um, but in my opinion, scores are everything. So... Yeah, that's just me. Uh, anyways, back to the game. Um, one relic. Alright, I thought I had a second good relic out there, but no. I, I just played so many games that I'm confusing this with different games I played. But yeah, whatever. Um, going out to get this polar bear. Nice hunt. And I can see more berry bushes right here. So this is a pretty good area to, to block off and just defend. But at the same time, I still have berry bushes at home. So I think it's pretty good to go outside of your base early on. Because um, later in the game, the enemy could easily take the map control. And you would be denied off of all this food. So you'd have to farm earlier. But like this, if I am denied off of all this food, I still have berry bushes at home. So I am not going to be screwed. Um, do do. -do. I was pretty sure there's a second relic on this map that I was going to claim. Because I remember going for... Oh, there it is. Ship of Fingernails. That's another really good relic. So I decided to claim that one as well. And the this one. So basically, this provides me a bonus in all three resources. Basically, food, one, and gold. Uh, so I think that's pretty good, especially for a low hunt map. And he has not even advanced to the Classic Age yet. So it's kind of late because Thor players usually advance at 432 to the Classic Age. Especially versus Atlantis. They know he's going to rush. Or Atlantis players are going to rush, so... Mm, I'm kind of surprised, or at least I was surprised that he didn't advance yet in the game. But look at this, he does have wonderful micro, like he... Micros his unit out just in time to avoid my unit. So this comes down to a micro war, he just advanced, so he's getting his free mate unit and come out with a few hearses as well. Uh, I'm just micro out my myth unit, using my terminal on his herser, he knows I'm doing that. Coming forward with a Valkyrie, sorry I call it Valkyrie again. Uh, I'm trying to scout with my Promethean if I can find some villagers. I see one chopped tree there, so I know he's chopping wood. And I'm going to send this back here, I think. Running away with my Terma, trying to micro it out, uh, lure it into the fire of Behemoth, I don't know. And then using the Terma on the Herster. So I feel like I'm doing pretty good, but he's also counteracting me really well with the micro. Running away with 15 hit points and letting my unit die to t uh, TC fire, arrow fire, I don't know. But... I also kill his herser, so this was a completely even trade. I lost my Oracle Hero, he lost his herser hero, but think of it this way. I got my Oracle Heroes for free, he had to pay 80 food and 40 gold for it, so I personally think I got an advantage off of this, plus I denied him from fully walling off this tower, so what I'm going to do right now is just uh, yeah, destroy the house, destroy the tower, because I have a feeling he's going to wait to watch tower any second. Uh, but look at this, he's going for three longhouses, so it's kind of scary. He could be going for a full-out raiding cavalry attack. That's pretty good right now because I'm only making terminal myth units. However, I don't know if he's going to do that. That's kind of a noob move because late game full-out raiding cavalry kind of lose the game. Uh, but meanwhile, I'm just scouting for his dwarves and I happen to find some here. And I try to kill them off. He... I'm not going to go on his perspective, but I'm going to show you his map. Um, yeah, I didn't find this, by the way. I'm just spoiling it for you guys. Spoiling it. Um, he was distracted down here by making houses and buildings and units. So I got a free dwarf kill. He just realized at the last second that it was dying. He should have garrisoned in that tower, but he went for the town center, so he kind of lost that unit. Um, coming in with raiding cavalry, old strikes, and horses. So I cannot really counteract that easily, uh, obviously. But I can still try and micro out the myth units, which I'm not doing. <laughs> uh, but he's trying to micro out his herser from dying, so that's really good. Um, I was really surprised that this guy knew how to micro really well. So, yeah. Yeah, I was failing here not microing my heroes onto his myth unit. I don't know why it's kind of lagging. Maybe it's because... Actually, I don't know why. But look at this. I finally killed his Hursar hero. So my Mathians kind of have an edge against his army. Unless he brings a second hero into the fight. Which is outside right there. Uh, trying to micro out with the Valkyrie. But my turn up firing it down with two javelins. And I'm still not taking care of those three heroes. What? Wait. Why did I go in his perspective? Oh my god. I thought I was not even going to go there. Um... Wait, while I'm there, let's just check the population. Well, I have a mass, massive population advantage from this fight. Well, that's pretty good. So, right now I feel pretty confident because um, I did lots of damage with my first small army. And I can easily just one hit this herser and then run away. Or maybe two hits. 
Um, and if I'm really, really just going in for the cheese, I can uh, kill one of these Raiding Cavalry as well with two hits. Or even this Throwing Axeman with one hit if they all are accurate. <clears throat> accurate. But instead, I decide to pull back finally. So this is when... Um, I kind of decided to go more in economy, go for a second town center as well, and try to raid him as well, but, you know, I'm mostly focused on economy right now. I'm going to destroy his forward house right there, because it's out in the open, and it takes Norse kind of long to rebuild buildings, so it's it's pretty good to destroy that. Um, and since I knew he's chopping wood back here, I'm just scouting, I mean sending my uh, Terma in the back, just avoiding these villagers. Uh, but no problem, at least I find some wood, wood gatherers. But he has great micro, so before I even hit him, he just saw my units there. So he's not bad. I, I like how he can actually uh, multitask and, you know, kind of just get on track perfectly. But I still managed to kill one villager, just like I killed one dwarf up here, which I forgot to show it. Oh, I did show it, never mind. So I killed two of his villagers so far. Um, yeah, that's not too much, but it's still pretty good for me. Uh, I do have an advantage economically, plus, plus I'm going for second town center. Uh, he could be going for this since I didn't scout it, but I highly doubt he's going for that because he did not have his army guarding near that town center. He actually has his army guarding here, which means um, he just let this, he would let that die if he were taking it. So I don't think he's taking that town center, obviously. Um, but what am I doing? It seems like, oh yeah, what I was playing at the moment is to go for a heroic age right about now or in like a minute or two because I have almost enough food. I just need another house to support villager production. I could make a house back here because these villagers are out in the open and he has raiding cavalry now so he could easily kill my villagers. Um, so I think that's what I'm planning to do right about now. Make a house, where am I making it? Oh, coming forward with Raiding Cavalry and a Valkyrie, uh, just gonna scout my town center, but I already built it up, so. Now, I'm gonna switch to his perspective. He's actually scouting the dark areas of the map. I'm not sure how... Oh, never mind. He was only going back here because he saw my army. He didn't know I took the town center here. He's just scouting down here, trying to find gold mines, I guess. Um, which he did find, but I'm not taking that. My villagers are back here, and lucky for me, he did not find them. So, he was really lucky with these villagers, and I was really lucky with those villagers. Um, <clears throat> yeah, both of us have a luck shot because the other player didn't scout well enough. And I know he's going to attack me back here, so I'm grading towers straight away, coming back with my units, uh, and I'm still trying to advance to the cage, but I failed the mission because the multi-town center production upkeep cost way too much. So I decided to shockwave his army and try to just distract the units, uh, go for the Valkyrie mostly because that can obviously heal the rest of the units and it's so OP. And plus, once I upgrade crenellations, crenellations or whatever from my towers, uh, which I'm doing right now, then they have a huge bonus damage versus cavalry. Maybe not that big, but I find them overpowered. So. I really like that upgrade and it's going to be epic versus Cavalry. Now I'm not sure why he didn't use Forest Fire right here. I was really expecting him for to use Forest Fire right here, um, but he didn't. Like I was actually focused on this spot for a second because I was pretty sure he's going to Forest Fire me there. Um, but anyways, he was trying to lure me out into the open and now he's just hitting on my units. Um, killed one of my tournament heroes, but that's about all the damage he could do at the moment. And the good thing right now is that I have two town centers, obviously a massive economical advantage. Um, but if we look at his perspective, he's had a population advantage for quite a while because he has so many units. So obviously I'm not even making any military yet anymore uh, because I'm going full in on economy. Well, I feel like it's not that dangerous to do because um, I have towers. Now my problem is that I ran out of gold. And this is one of the gold mines I could go for or this. So they're both out in the middle of nowhere. So instead of going for gold right now, I just decided to advance all in on food and wood and, um, you know, just a strong boom. Because at least right now, I don't have to worry about defending the gold mines. Plus, I don't even have military to support defense. So that's exactly why I wasn't going for gold earlier. But now I'm finally throwing up a military barracks to counteract his raiding cavalry. And it, uh, I think I'm going to send all my units up to this gold mine. I decided to take this because this is... I'm not sure exactly why I took it, but... Um, I just took this north gold mine instead of this one. I think it's because this can be defended off a lot more than this. There's an ice field around this, I can't make buildings there. And plus, it, that seems a lot more farther from my base than this. So I can easily just travel up there. 
And I'm gonna make a mainer right about here, I believe. Oh yeah, plus if I really wanted to, I could go for a town center, but instead of that, I'm just saving up my resources so I can make a palace up here as well. Uh, that would be a pretty good move because obviously it would defend off my villagers. Now, meanwhile, I finally decided to attack him for once because <laughs> I've been like off of him for five minutes straight. I'm just scouting for any gold mines he has because I know he scouted this mine and I'm pretty sure he scouted this, but I was wrong. He does not know there's a gold mine there. But he is constantly sending his raiders to this mine to check if I'm mining it. Luckily, I did not go there. That's huge luck that I did not take that mine. Uh, anyways, I'm just scouting for any gold mines back here. I'm not going to find any as you just saw there. No gold mines out there. Um, and no villagers either. So obviously, he's going all into this area of the map. Which, just like I talked about earlier, is perfect to do because he needs to guard both town centers. Uh, I didn't think of it this way just yet. And I was going to check if his medium gold mine ran out. Well... It's obviously run out because we're 12 minutes in game, but I'm just trying to scout back here if he's taking the town center, you know, any small tiny things I can find. Uh, meanwhile, he, yeah, he took the forward town center and he's coming forward with a massive army of raiders. So I quickly try to react and send back my units. Um, I already made a palace and I'm going for my third town center right now. If I really wanted to, I could make a tower right here. I, I'm not sure why I didn't do that. I wish I would because I can barely afford that, which is good. Uh, but instead, I think I'm investing in upgrades at the moment. Hmm, I'm not really sure. I, I still wish I would have thrown up a tower there. So anyways, I scouted here and found out all his dwarves are on that mine, or most of them at least. Um, I think that's all of them. I was assuming that's all of them at least, so yeah. It seems like... I really need to harass this area of the map, but he's not stupid. He's making a second military base right here in between the two gold mines to protect both of them. Um, and plus, this is already pretty much protected, so I can't really take that town center. And yeah, not much action happening. He's trying to raid me with cavalry, uh, while at the same time, I'm just trying to push them back with Mermillo. But he doesn't have a bad micro, so he only lost one cavalry this whole time. And I'm not sure why the record game is kind of lagging. If I speed it up, this is way too fast. But if I slow it down, this is way too slow. So I wish there'd be an in-between speed, like StarCraft or whatever. Uh, but whatever, this is good. We're just going to play it on fast speed for a while. And look at this. Ah, oh, this is what I hate about fast speed. I just missed all the action here. Um, when my Townsend had 2,000 out of 2,100 hit points, so it was almost complete, he sent two cavalry here to scout, uh, as well as an army here. Because he was knowing, well he was he didn't know, but he was assuming that I might be taking the town center. He, so he scouted at the last second, but using the stand ground technique, my villagers did not run away, and I just garrisoned in and they were safe. <clears throat> so anyways, as you can see, I'm almost maxed out my villagers. I think these are the last two I can make. Uh, so therefore, I decide I can upgrade to the mythic age pretty soon, and I make a market. Um... Besides that, not much action is happening. All my resources are 300 or under. My gold is getting pretty high, but that's because I need gold to make dryads. So that's a pretty good investment at the moment. And I don't seem to be upgrading anything, really. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why. I think I've already upgraded quite enough. And I had to chop my way through just to get to this patch of hunt. That kind of sucked. But hunt is not that important anymore because I'm going to go for farming anyways. And I already have, like, uh, 10 farms. So that's plenty. Coming in with another raiding army using shockwave on the units, but I kind of messed up because I sent all units against one cavalry, so I could only kill one horseman. All the others were safe. So I I learned after the game that I should have let my units spread up because even if I don't kill one but damage all of them really well, that's still better than killing one uh, because I only killed one and didn't damage any of the other units. So anyways, um, since I have destroyers and myth units, I decided to try to take this base of his because I know this is a crucial point. Two gold mines and of course this town center. This means the whole game for him. So he knows that I'm coming in here and he's just going up with towers immediately. Really good move by him. Um, I try to kind of go around and deny the towers with my termite first, uh, but I was not successful so I sent them back immediately. So this is pretty good defense from his point and yeah, that's pretty good for him. But as you can see, I'm really rich in resources so I can upgrade to Mythic Age any second I want. So I decided to do that right about now. And, of course, I'm upgrading in the armory everything I can upgrade right now. So I seem to be doing pretty good. I have lots of wood and gold. Uh, this is a mistake I made. 
I could have done better. I should have right now sent away my units and made two palaces forward. I think. Oh yeah, I should have made two. I did make. Never mind. Oh my god. I'm just commentating bad. I forgot I made two palaces. But anyways, I'm sending forward Terma because I'm gonna advance any second actually. Well, any 30 seconds. But um, not only can they kill a villager at most, but this is gonna give me line of sight to hopefully use the Tartan Gate right about there. Uh, he saved all his villagers though, so I can kill anything, but I'm still denying him off of resources. And checking if he's building the town center. Surprisingly, not yet. That's a huge surprise. But he's coming forward with cavalry, a huge cavalry army actually. And look at this micro. He's purposely trying to trap my terma, so he's pretty good at microing. Um, and splitting, even splitting, so. The problem is that my terma actually ran in between his two raiding cavalry armies, so most of them are safe. And I can use the Tartan Gate right where I want it to be. Uh, and look at this, it's a pretty good move. He made a building right beside the gold mine, so he has line of sight of it and he knows when I'm taking it. So that's pretty good for raiding, but since I have an overpowered army, I can just take care of that pretty easily. Now. Let's look at the god powers. I just used my Tartarian Gate, and he still has the Forest Fire and the Flaming Weapon, so... This is what changed the game, the Tartarian Gate. Um, he could have won, in my opinion. I'm just gonna give it away to you guys. He failed a lot. He's sending in all his uh, Raiding Cavalry onto the Tartarian Gate, but I think he should have used Flaming Weapons, because he could destroy this really fast. But he did not use flaming weapons and he's letting these units die for free. They're just dying. All of them are dying right now. So if he would have used flaming weapons, I know that he could have destroyed his Tartan Gate really fast. He did not use it, however, so all of his raiding cavalry died without even destroying my Tartan Gate. So that's pretty much GG right there. Uh, all of his raiding cavalry died, every single one. And look at this, he did more than half damage. So I. I'm 100% sure that if he would have used the Flaming Weapons God Power, he could have taken care of that really easily, but he only now uses it with like 90 population, 80 population actually. So that was his massive, massive mistake. I mean, he's made many small mistakes, like uh, not, did he just walk through the gate? Anyways, he's made many small mistakes, like not using uh, Forest Fire here early game. But that's not a huge mistake. The biggest mistake I can think of is this. If he would have used the Flame Weapons God Power, he could have destroyed this with ease. So that, yeah, I, I can't believe he did not use Flame Weapons there. That would have just changed the game. Uh, but anyways, that's pretty much GG because he's losing all his villagers here, lost his military, and still not destroy the gate, plus losing his base here. Forced off of gold, he has no choice left but to resign. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this game. Um, I have nothing else to say. <laughs> that was really interesting. Uh, all these small things come down to the game. If he would have used that one god power, I'm pretty sure he could have won the game. Just that one small god power. That's what the game comes down to. So. Obviously, uh, his other major mistake was that he did not have much economy. There are lots of players who are not noobs, like they can play like this guy, but they can't handle economy, like they go all out on military. And I've seen many people like that. I've seen a 1650 Poseidon player who was all out on economy, I mean all out on military, but he had like no economy whatsoever. So if I would have versed him, I know I would have won because I could have won late game with economy just like I did here. The reason why I won late game besides the flaw he had here is economy, 100% economy. So economy is huge. You guys have to realize that and I'm pretty sure most of you know that. Um, but look at this, he had, he had 47 villagers, that's nothing for Thor. 47, are you kidding? I had 29, like wow, uh, 28 villagers in one caravan. So, well, it's really bad. 47 villagers, plus he had almost no upgrades. Well, he had actually quite a few, but not as many as me, of course. So, you know, these things cost the game for him. Um, it was a pretty good game, though. So, <clears throat> hope you guys enjoyed the match. And that's about it. I'm going to really hope I can get an ISIS forwarding game out live of where I try to tower rush. I really want to pull off a tower rush improvisation live. So, that's going to be exciting. I'm looking forward to that.